Just did a little Starbucks run for Sal and myself, uh, a little cup of coffee to get the morning started. And it reminded me of a story, well, the coffee didn't remind me of a story, but the parking lot over here reminded me of a story about when I damaged a Tahoe. And it's funny, I'm actually in a Tahoe right now. So I'm gonna go across the street here into this parking lot and see if it still looks the same way it did back when I, uh, when I damaged a car. See, basically back in the day, if we needed to go somewhere, a lot of times we would just put a dealer plate on a used car and we would take that car to go get lunch or whatever it may be. This is with the previous ownership. So one day I did just that. I went to the supermarket that used to be here. It's not the oldie that's here now. It was a Pathmark or something like that. And it had a pretty good salad bar. So I was driving a, I forget what year it was, maybe like an 07 or an 09 uh, red Tahoe used vehicle into this parking lot. I made the left here just like I would have done, uh, well, I'm making the left here now, just like I would have did that day. And then I went in to park. Now, when I parked, I went down this row, and as you can see, there's a sidewalk down the middle of the row. Um, all right, lady, back to the story. There's a sidewalk down the middle of the row, and you used to have these big planters on it. So one day, I pulled in, just like I'm doing now, in between these cars. Now, when you're in a Tahoe like this, you're looking at your sides, you're making sure that you have uh, you know, adequate space on either side. When I got about here, all of a sudden, boom, I hit something. Now, I couldn't imagine what I hit because as you look forward, there's literally nothing here. Now, I knew the sidewalk was here. I knew it didn't hit the curb. What I ended up hitting was a big concrete flower pot. So they had maybe like seven or eight of them. They're obviously gone now. They used to have them going up along the sidewalk here and uh, they were decorations, right? Well, somebody must have hit it from the other side and pushed it right along the curb. So when like you park in a spot and you overhang the curb, you know, a little bit with the bumper of the car, well, there was no room to do that. When I went to, to pull into the spot fully, I just bashed a truck right into the concrete flower pot, causing, uh, you know, significant damage to the front bumper cover. I remember getting out of the vehicle just completely flabbergasted, like what could I possibly hit? Walked around to the front, saw the flower pot, saw the damage to the bumper. You know, the, the whole bumper cover had to be replaced. And uh, you know, it was just one of those things like that. It was just one of those things. Now, if you work for a dealership and you get into a situation like that and your owners are cool like the owners were uh, back then, you know, I came back, I pulled the truck right up front, I immediately explained to him what happened and told him, listen, I'll pay for whatever the damage is and, uh, you know, just get it to the body shop, get a quote. Uh, with that, the owner basically looked at me and said, listen, don't worry about it, just bring it back to the body shop, we'll fix it up. So they didn't charge me for it, which they, they could have and I would have been willing to pay. Uh, but it was nice that they did that, uh, knowing it was a simple accident and those sort of things sometimes do happen. Um, that was actually the only time that I've ever damaged a car uh, you know, while working for the dealerships. Is that the only time? Was that the only time? Yeah, I'm pretty pretty sure that was the only time. I can't remember anything else. Anyway, back to work. Okay, it's official. 2021 is over. I tallied up the amount of cars I sold and how many of each model and that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna go over some of that with you. Uh, first, thank you guys for the, the, the comments of, um, of support. You know, people saying to hang in there and, and just keep doing uh, what you're doing and stay positive and all that. It means a lot. I am very positive. I am hanging in there. I'm not going anywhere. If there's one thing I learned in the automotive industry over 17 years is the, the, the income you earn is a bit of a roller coaster. You're gonna have your highs, you're gonna have your lows. But if you you know you you stay the course and you sell cars and you and you hit certain averages, the money's okay and it's all gonna it's all gonna average out in the end anyway. So like where I had a very good October, November, I didn't have such a hot December. But again, highs, lows, it evens out. In my last video, I did mention that I sold less vehicles in 2021 than I did in 2020, but yet I made more income. Obviously that is because profits on vehicles are up. So normally where we sell a vehicle in a very competitive marketplace, pre-pandemic and pre-inventory shortage, you know, we a lot of times made what was called a flat. A flat is the minimum amount of commission you can make on a particular vehicle, which in our case is $100. So you make your hundred bucks if you sell the car, hopefully you do enough units to hit unit bonuses and different parts of your pay plan, which as long as you 
produce sales, you make good money. Well, in the last year, you made good money and you really didn't have to produce as many sales because your profit margin was a lot more on the vehicles. Um, we weren't making minis. You know, you're selling vehicles at MSRP or in some cases over MSRP, you're making a lot more than that $100 mini or that $100 flat that we were so used to for, for years and years and years. So last year, I totaled out and sold 149 vehicles. Now, 149 vehicles is probably one of my lower amounts uh, in my entire career. That's an average of about 12 and a half cars per month. Um, again, not great. 99 of those were new cars, 50 of them were used cars. Uh, compared to 2020, I did 183 units. Now in 2020, we obviously had the pandemic, we had things shutting down, it was a completely different, completely different year altogether. Um, normally I sell just over 200, between like 210, 220 in that range. Um, so we're definitely down as far as units, but again, financially, I'm happy, I'm grateful to say that I had a, I had a good year. Uh, which is important because you come to work to make money and you hope that you can do that. So in 2021, I sold 34 less vehicles than I did in 2020. Now that doesn't count the fact that I still have, I think, 16 or 18 factory orders uh, that haven't been built yet. Um, those are just in the pipeline and we're waiting. Of those 18 orders, I think eight of them are Corvettes, which is super uh, exciting. One of those Corvettes should be here this month, hopefully. Um, it made it through the tornado, it didn't have any damage. It's, right now, as I check the status, it's pending dispatch for transportation. So we're just waiting for it to show up. I did also put together a, a list of all the cars I sold and how many of each model. The Traverse came in first place with 29 units. Uh, the second place to that was the Equinox with 21. Third place, Silverado with 20. Uh, that's new and used combined. I just looked at all the Chevy vehicles. Uh, and it's funny because if you look at all the vehicles I've sold of that 149, uh, 50 of them were certified pre-owned or pre-owned. I only sold six vehicles that were not a General Motors vehicle. I sold two Ford Escapes, one Volkswagen Jetta, one Mazda 3, and one Chrysler Town & Country. Everything else I sold was either Chevy, Buick, GMC, or Cadillac. I figured I'd take a quick drone flight around the dealership just to give you an aerial perspective of what things look like and to get me to the next scene. But before we do that, I also checked out one more stat. How many cars the dealership sold in 2021? That answer, new and used combined, was 926. So if you take 926, you divide it by seven salespeople, that's an average of about 132 cars per person. Uh, now, it's not the way it works. There's people who sell less, there's people who sell more. It kind of averages out um, you know, accordingly. Uh, I'm right in the middle. I'm kind of in the middle, so really I could have done a lot better. You know, It's behind us, the year's over. Um, I'm, I'm fine with the results, and uh, we're just gonna try to push harder when we have more inventory. For us to sell only 34 cars less with literally no inventory, imagine we had inventory. Like if we had Tahoes and Suburbans and, and these new models as they came out like we normally did, um, I would think I probably should have and would have sold another 50, 60 cars easy and been in that low 200 range, 220, 225, like in that range like I normally was prior to the whole pandemic inventory shortage and that sort of stuff. I say the next scene, and I don't even know what the next scene is because I really don't have all that much to do. So we're gonna do a little lot maintenance. We're gonna slide this Cadillac over, slide these traverses over, and then bring these larger SUVs into the front line so they're on display. Uh, that'll give me something to do for the next 20 minutes. And um, we'll see where we go from there. I 
this is nice. On a windowsill. The 13. Sure. See. This is pretty nice. I tell you what, nice Cadillac leather interior. It's got the shift knob that you see in uh, the Buicks, also in the Chevy Bolt. Uh, it's all wheel drive with uh, the touch of one button. Nice little luxurious door to cover your cup holders. Not a bad car. This has 28,770, uh, 28,787 uh, on the odometer. We can't certify this car because it's a Cadillac and only Cadillac stores can certify Cadillacs. I don't know what we're asking for. We just recently got this in. I never actually looked it up to see. On our sticker here, it'll have a price, but usually the internet is a little less. 37,577 on, uh, on our printed window sticker there. 37,577. Let's see what it is online. All right, I pulled it up. 36,277 online. So it's, uh, what is it like? A, that's not even a thousand bucks. A little more than a thousand bucks. Uh, less on the internet. 2018 XT5 Luxury in all wheel drive. Just moving the last car here, then I'm gonna go back inside. And uh, at that point, I'm gonna end this video. Um, I'm gonna, I'm trying, or I want to try to get more consistent with uploads so i'm gonna just film everything anything i don't know try to find a story you know each day or every couple days that i can put together and make something that'll be relatively entertaining to you um i appreciate you guys hanging around and uh continuing to support the channel content will hopefully get more fun in the future if we start getting inventory again it's it's so tough for me to think that not so long ago two three years i can take this gopro camera walk outside, get a customer behind the scenes, sell a car, take another customer, get that car ready, sell another one, and like literally have a full day's work, end up selling three cars in one day or whatever the case may be. Last month for December, I sold three cars the whole month. So it's been very uneventful here. And um, you know, again, it's just challenging trying to come up with some sort of content uh, when there's no content and nothing really going on. But 2022, I'm gonna figure that out.